Hey there, this is Beth Lauren Parrish with Inspired Riding. I'm a remote coach and certified riding instructor. I encourage equestrians to regain their mojo so they can feel safe, confident, and connected to their horses. In this podcast, I'm going to give you my origin story of how I got into riding and began teaching. I had a great uncle named Bill who passed away when I was eight years old. He was an avid fox hunter, as well as very boisterous, fun-loving, generous human, one a child could often relate to. I remembered vividly when he took me on my first pony ride at the age of five. It was in the winter, and although my fingers were numb, my excitement was overwhelming. I actually remember thinking I was getting to sit on top of a beautiful animal, and it didn't seem to mind. This experience was ingrained in my young memory much like Uncle Bill's smell of cigar smoke in his car. He was the first family member to pass away in my reality, and I was grappling with the grieving process. I was certainly a happy-go-lucky kid, yet had a strong desire to be more involved somehow in acknowledging this wonderful being. I came up with a solution. I told my parents that I wanted to take riding lessons to keep it in the family. My parents agreed, although reluctantly, and found a riding school only 10 minutes from our home. Given the cost of riding horses, my parents often told me later they prayed it was just a phase. Oops. I remember my first lesson very clearly. I was paired up with a Palomino paint pony named Al. He had a bushy mane and quite a bucking streak, I later discovered. The instructor was very impressed with me and told my mom I was a natural. Apparently, I began picking up how to post the trot all on my own and was going around the arena splendidly. I was never put on a lunge line, something I like to put all my beginners on, kind of like training wheels, since the instructor has more control of the horse. During my first lesson, I was taught how to do a flying dismount. This is when all goes wrong and you have to abandon ship. It proved quite useful in my second lesson. That cute little Al decided to take off with me outside the arena. I demonstrated my flying dismount perfectly. Somehow this didn't deter me in the least bit. I loved riding more than anything in my short life thus far. I would often get very huge butterflies on my way to riding lessons. Something I discovered to be quite common among other riders who don't often talk about it. Sensing a disturbance in the force, my mother would ask, Are you sure you want to keep riding? And I would quickly say, yes, I'm just excited. Later on, I think a lot of the stress had to do with the lackadaisical way of instruction at this particular riding school. Once my parents brought me to the top school on Long Island a few months later, my anxiety melted away into complete joy and excitement to the point where I could hardly pay attention in school on the days of my riding lessons. I usually took one private lesson and one group lesson per week at the riding school. My parents encouraged me to take babysitting jobs and do odd jobs in order to help pay for the lessons. Anytime I was out of line or my grades would slip, the threat that I couldn't ride was the ultimate punishment. I immediately shaped up. Even at that age, I knew that being with horses was what I truly wanted all the time. Even during all the excitement of riding, I never forgot my great uncle Bill. I always felt like he was watching over me with a huge smile. This feeling never went away but would sometimes transform into a feeling that I was being watched over or guided by the universe. Riding and communicating with horses in a silent way was where I felt at peace. Going to school and having to do my classwork felt like a chore, like I was being trapped. Soaring over jumps with a willing steed gave me such a sense of freedom, connection, and joy. I continued taking riding lessons until it was time for college. I decided to concentrate on studying for the first semester and became steadily grumpier as time went on. I was guided to ask myself one evening before I went to sleep what would truly make me happy. The image of me walking a horse down to the arena of my childhood barn leaped into my consciousness quite quickly. The awareness was so strong and so fast that I almost jumped out of bed with excitement. The next day, I immediately found a local barn and was able to become a working student. I cleaned stalls part-time in exchange for more riding lessons. My grumpiness melted away. Although I continued to ride on and off during college, 
I followed my path in pursuit of a degree in international studies. I was fascinated with other cultures, governments, and how countries interrelated. I even did a semester abroad in Switzerland and spent a good five months learning about the major international organizations headquartered out of Geneva. The last month was spent traveling around Europe with my two best friends. Upon graduation, I was in a quandary about what I really wanted to do with my degree. Instead of stressing too much about it, I decided to take the summer to just quote-unquote relax and took a job as a routing instructor at a wonderful camp in Poland, Maine. I had never officially taught riding and was extremely nervous, yet thrilled about the possibility. The riding director was extremely kind and clear about how to go about teaching. She even broke it all down into palatable steps that were so easy to teach to the campers. I quickly realized that I had a knack at working with the more advanced riders, since I felt like I had categorized every single one of my riding lessons growing up. That's when I decided, if I could do what I was passionate about for a career, why not? Once the summer was over, I began searching for more riding instructor positions back home in the New York area, but I was unsuccessful. I ended up taking a temp job right in the middle of Manhattan, overlooking Central Park, for about two weeks. It's quite comical to me that I was in the middle of the city acting as a receptionist when my dream job was actually on the west side of the island waiting for me. One evening, I researched riding in Manhattan and decided to inquire if the schools needed more instructors. To my surprise, I was asked to come for an interview at the Chelsea Piers Equestrian Center and was told to wear my riding gear. The interview consisted of a handshake, the manager informing the groom to tack up Quebec, and then asking me to ride her around so he could watch. A little wary yet excited, I hopped on this mare and had her walk trot and canter around unassumingly. The next thing I knew, I was in the manager's office and he was chatting with me like I already had the job and what to expect at their school. I thought that was the coolest interview ever. <laughs> what I didn't know at the time was that mayor could be very sensitive and would often rear and eject her riders if she didn't like what was going on above her. Phew. The time at this school was absolutely perfect for a young riding instructor. I slurped up as much information as I could. There were often 10 riding lessons going on at the same time in this huge indoor arena that overlooked the Hudson River on one side and the Empire State Building on the other. I was able to pick up on the nuances of so many other instructors and often took lessons from them whenever I had the chance. I quickly became a very popular instructor and ended up with over 30 steady clients. I absolutely loved teaching there, but was still quite cold in the winter. For this reason, I ventured out west to assist at a riding school near Sacramento, California. I've been blessed with many more adventures since then, including creating my own riding schools, going to countless clinics and local shows, and moving around quite a bit. But I'll always find that just being around a horse puts me in my happy place. I'm sure it's the same for you. If you'd like to learn more about my journey, including insightful exercises for equestrians, you can download my guidebook on my website, inspiredriding.com forward slash books. You could also follow me on facebook.com forward slash inspired riding. Thank you so much for listening and may the horse be with you always.